What's going on, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes are back with another superstar from the sport of mixed martial arts. Today we get to talk to UFC flyweight Brandon Marino, who's got a big fight coming up against Brandon Royval at the UFC card in Mexico. Brandon, of course, as you all know, is a two-time defending, uh, sorry, two-time champion in the flyweight division. He wants that gold back. What's going on, Brandon? How are you? What's up, guys? Nothing. Just, I mean, here in Mexico, enjoying my time. Uh, enjoy my training camp. Um, yeah, like like you say, I'm super excited to for my next fight. When did you get to Mexico, and what's the hardest adjustment? Because you've been living in the United States for a while now. We're gonna hear about the altitude, air pollution, food and drink. How about for you? What's the toughest adjustment? Every every single time when uh, UFC make a, a a UFC event in, in in Mexico City, the altitude is is always uh, a conversation around, right? So I just want to make sure. I think everybody is, is different, so I just I don't I don't want to pass any detail in this training camp, and that's why I came here. Um, I'm training very hard, and you know, again, I'm super excited for this opportunity. Um, I know Brandon Royal is gonna come very motivated. Uh, is this position nothing to lose, everything to win? Uh, because he underestimated right in, in December. So I mean, for me, it's just to make it a statement and. But I keep my name there for the for the flyweight for the flyweight championship in the future. You know, I wanted to ask you: when the matchmakers call you, do you ever say "otra vez el mismo way"? Because if you think about it, your last twelve fights, ten of them have been rematches. You know, twice with Roy, well, twice with Pantoja, really three if you count the the reality show, four with Figgy, two with Roy. Well, like, what's going on here? Man, I mean, uh, <laughs> what can I say? Like, obviously, uh, if you watch my, my record in the last years, since 2020, I'll, I'll be fighting with the same guys. And it's kind of tired, it's kind of boring. But it is what it is. Like, I, I, I added uh, uh, for this fight against Amir Albasi because, you know, new body, new game plan, new everything. So I was excited for that. But then he had to pull out for an injury. Uh, and, man, this is how this sport works, and I, under, I understand. Um, Brandon Royal jumped for the opportunity, and then, I mean, obviously, again, yes, it's, it's tired, it's, it's boring, but fight is a fight, win is a win, and I need this win to keep my name there, you know? When it was you and Albazi, it was regarded as a number one, conti uh, number one contender fight. Do you feel it's still the same? Maybe just for you, though, because Roy will just fought for the title. So is, are the stakes the same for you, though? Yeah, for sure. 100%. Like, like I said before, maybe for Roy Ball is, you know, try to get this victory and, and keep his name there, you know, at the top. But for me, it's like, like put everything very clear, you know, make the statement to, to say, hey, Brandon Moreno is the next one for the, for the, for the title. Um, so that's why I'm saying uh, Brandon Royal is going to be very motivated to, to beat me. Uh, and for me, I, I have to be very focused uh, to get this victory uh, if I want to uh, fight for the, for the title next. In your career, Brandon, you've had a lot of great fights, a lot of great finishes. Is there one of those that's your favorite that when you're doing your training camps, you're like, man, something like that is what I want to finish in front of my people in Mexico? Uh, for sure, like, man, I, I fought already twice in, in, in Mexico City. The first one in 2017, I, I lost. And the second one, I, I got a, a, a draw uh, for the, from the judges. Uh, a lot of people uh, think I won, but, you know, it is what it is. So, yes, I, I feel more, very extra motivated to, to put my, my hand up, to raise my hand uh, in front of my people. And I'm very excited, too, because... Uh, I mean, the arena is so loud already. So the people, the, the arena will be full of 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 a lot of Mexicans supporting me and obviously supporting all the the Mexican fighters on the card. Pero te voy a hacer la pregunta en español por si acaso. ¿Cuál de todas tus fini, uh, finishes es tu favorita que te gustaría replicar para tu público? Oh, okay. Uh, Damn, I don't know. I mean, I, I have a, a, a few good ones. I think that the last one with Figgy was kind of nice. I wanted to finish the fight inside of the round, right? No no waiting for the doctor to stop the fight. 
But I mean, that hook was amazing. Something like that would be awesome. Wait up. <laughs> Brandon, you mentioned uh, Figgy, and I did have a question, not so much about him, but you know, he he just had a fight at 135, and I wonder, uh, have you thought about the future a little bit down the road? Do you think maybe one day you could go up and be a 135er, or do you feel like 125 is going to be where you're always going to be? I mean, never say never, right? But I don't know. I think my body is perfect for the fight with division. Um, I saw uh, the Figgy's uh, fight against Rob Fon, and he looks very, very good. You know, he he looks very solid in that division. <coughs> Sorry, um, but I mean, he's he's a huge, a huge fighter, even for the 125. Uh, but to me, I think 125 is gonna be my home, my home, all my professional career. You never say never, right? But you know. <laughs> You know, the other day uh, in a conversation, we were talking about Julio Cesar Chavez and the impact that he had for boxing in Mexico. And I got to thinking, because he was I was watching an interview with him yeah. and he was talking about how much pressure he had on him aside from fighting. And in our sport, in mixed martial arts, you've kind of carried that torch for a while. Can you maybe talk about the pressures that come with not just being Brandon Moreno, the fighter, but Brandon Moreno, the father, Brandon Moreno the representative of an entire country in one sport. Um, can you maybe talk about that? Has it gotten easier? Yeah. Um, man, what can I say? Like, I, I think since my first fight against Figgy, 20, December, all my life I is around constant uh, pressure every time. Every single fight is for a championship. And the name of Brandon Moreno is, is is big since that time. It's bigger since that time. Um, and I don't know. I, you know, I'm just trying to don't think about it because if I think if I overthink about about it, it could be harder for me to 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 support all the pressure around, around myself. So yes, man. I mean, that's my secret. I I live in pressure, but at the same time, I'm just trying to don't think about it. <laughs> What do you do uh, in the sense of Amir al -Bazi? You know, the time that was put in there of trying to figure out a game plan, training for a specific fighter. Do you feel like eventually that fight's just going to happen? It's eventually it'll happen down the road. And how how different was it for you to have to kind of turn the page a little bit towards a, a very different fighter in Brandon Royville? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the fight is going to happen in the future uh, for sure. I think uh, Amir Albasi is an amazing opponent. He just got an injury in his neck. He posted something in his social media about his surgery and everything. So I wish him a, a, a good and, and fast recovery. And for sure, I think he, that that fight could happen in the future. Um, the good thing about this, you know, uh, about Amir pulling out of the fight, just was like he gave me enough time to find another f uh, opponent and uh, have the uh, enough time to make another game plan. You know, obviously, uh, Brandon Royval is a different body, it's a, a different style, um, and that's it. You know, was like it's, it's un uh, uncomfortable um, when some fighter pull out of the fight, but I, I had enough time to to plan everything again. And then uh, now here's a couple questions that I'm just curious about. Um, okay. Which former opponent is cool? Like if Dana White said, you're going to be sitting here, but I only have one seat. We don't have many seats, so you can't bring anyone. And one of your former opponents is going to be sitting next to you. Who would you hope that it is? Because you get along. Even though you guys fought, you guys are cool. <laughs> Man, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean... I don't remember which event it was, but I mean, that happened like kind of recently. I sit next to uh, Kaikara France. He's very cool with me. I mean, we are very, uh, we are very cool each other. Obviously, we have always this uh, competitive feeling between us because we are the same division and we, we fought twice in the past. But I think him is, 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 is cool. <laughs> well, it was probably cool for you because you're 2 0, but maybe it wasn't cool for him. <laughs> but. <laughs> Anyway, um, fine for me, but I mean, if we talk about uh, 
someone I, I lost. I mean, I, I, I don't care if I sit next with, with Pantoja. He's, he's kind of weird sometimes, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have you ever met any Mexican fans that just don't like you? Um, you know, sports fans can be kind of just weird, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, uh, I, I, I don't know. Have you ever met? Like, I, I know a lot of McGregor fans, a lot of Irish fans. Not a lot, but I, I've heard of some that don't like McGregor. So I don't think the question's unusual. Huh. Man, no, I don't I don't think so. But if you think about it, it's not like a hater come with you like, hey, man, I hate you. They never do that. So that's why I think I don't I don't know uh, anyone who doesn't like like me. <laughs> You're going to fight this in February in Mexico, but ideally um independence day or maybe even cinco de mayo which for those that don't know it's more of a battle here united states mexico so i think independence day is more appropriate but uh, have you spoken to the ufc about the importance of having these fight dates that are traditionally given to you know boxing events to have them but maybe in mexico yeah i mean I, I don't talk with, with, with them uh, directly, but I, they start to watch all the the influence they they are putting in, in in Mexico, right? With the Mexican crowd. So, for example, last year the the Noche UFC was was huge uh, for right. the promotion. I, I was part of the promotion, you know, like I did like meet and greets around, uh, you know, all the people uh, supporting Alexa and all the uh, the Mexican fighters. So that that kind of uh, situations for UFC. I mean, they can watch uh, all the importance of, of the MMA in, in, in Mexico. So, I don't know, man. I mean, starting from, from that, from not sure what I said, I think they want to they wanna do that event like now, like every year. So, that's huge for us. Uh, and, man, I just believe with the pass of the time, this, they're just going to watch a really good uh, cards with a lot of Mexicans and, there's, and they start to put more events for us, for sure. Brandon, at UFC 296, how did you score the big fight? That was Strickland against against <laughs> Dricus Duplessis, right? No, no, no. That was UFC 297. UFC 296. Uh, yeah, but oh, guess so what? Pantoja against uh, Royball? Yeah, but I, I, I did a, a bad joke. I was gonna I was gonna let you start answering and then I was gonna ask you, no, I'm talking about Strickland and DDP. It was right next to you. You had the best seat in the house. He asked Gilbert Burns' kids to move to the side. Oh, you were on the crazy. other side. Crazy, you had front row for that, huh? When that, that moment was insane. It was it was funny to be there. I, actually I remember watching Strickland and DDP behind me. And then I, I turned my face to start to talk with my wife. I was ready to tell, tell her like, "Hey, let's move up. Let's move a little bit because everything is, is, is uh, something is going to happen right now." But in that moment, I say something is going to happen. It's just like jump, and everything will start to be a mess. Everything was fine, but then a bodyguard pushed me, and I went to the ground. It's fine. <laughs> I just I just wanted to protect my wife. <laughs> So you had a feeling that a fight might break out. You didn't think they were just going to go face to face for the cameras. You actually had a feeling a fight might break out. I think it was very clear, and actually Dana White said the same. I mean, who put a Strickland uh, and you know I'm behind uh, the, uh, who put DDP behind the Strickland? It's, it's, it's insane. So yeah, for sure, man. You can you can you can see it in his eye like man, something's going to happen. Uh huh. Has Legos ever approached you about any kind of sponsorship or being an ambassador or anything like that? I mean, you got millions <laughs> of followers. You're a world champion, and you're open about how much you like Legos. The only guys I know in MMA that like Legos is you and Dan Hardy. I don't know if you know that, but Dan Hardy loves Legos. Any luck with that? Yeah, he he, he showed me actually a few a few pictures of his collection. That's very cool. But no, man, I mean, the, the last time uh, my management talked with, with them, uh, they say something like, my my fans, they're not uh, their target. So I'm like, ah, come on, guys. <laughs> but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, 
Are you a fan of all the flyweights? Like, for example, when Figgy fought Rob Font, even though you and Figgy fought four times, were you rooting for him because he's a former flyweight? Or were you rooting for Font, I guess? I'm just curious about, you know, if you if all the flyweights are kind of fans of each other. Because this is a – if you think <laughs> about it, Brandon, this is a um, division that it took a long time to come to show up. Then they wanted to do yeah. away with it. Then they brought it back, you know. So you guys are like a fraternity. Um. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I was I was rooting maybe a little bit more for Figgy because uh, that you say like he's coming from one twenty five. He's representing us kind of like maybe yes, maybe inside of myself of me was like rooting a little bit more for for Figgy and man. I, I don't have like any bad blood with the other uh, flyweights. If, if I don't know if you can see my my social media or whatever, but I'm trying to don't put too much attention on, on what they are saying or what, what they are posting or you know. I'm just trying to enjoy my life and and, and, and be with my family and and just use my social media just to do something nice there. And that's it. Have you ever heard of the hydration system that one championship uses where? You just have to maintain your weight and not drop to 125, for example, to be considered a, a flyweight, uh, as long as you have a hydrated 135. Have you heard anything about that? Because, like, Demetrius Johnson, he went over to one championship. He says, I never want to cut to 125 again, but yet he's still regarded as a flyweight because the hydration system allows him to get to 135. Do you know anything about that? And if, if so, would, do you think that would be something you'd be interested in here in the United States? Man, that would be cool, but man, you have to go against a whole uh, system in the athletic commission he here in in United States, and I think that's a it's a really hard fight to 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 have. Okay, but yes, I, I hear about all, all the the system a one championship has about the weight cut, and sounds good, you know. Uh, I, mean, I would love to fight in my, my natural weight, you know, and don't put. All, all my attention in my weight cut and man, I, I'm a guy who loves food. You know, I'm Mexican. Mexican food is delicious. So <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know, man. I, I would love to eat a little bit more in, in my training camp so and be more happy because when you start to do your training camp and you start to cut some weight and uh, you start to cut some calories and the energy is a little bit low. So I would love to eat a little bit more in my training camps. Do you have a cheat day or a cheat meal during training camp and if so what is it always depends always depends my my uh, how is my my weight in that moment you know uh, normally so i work with um uh, with the nutritionist at the gmcpi his name his name is charles he's the best so he, he put me always like every week a, a goal to get okay, like a, for I don't know, for example, this week you have to be 145. Next next week you have to be 143. You know, and uh, everything like that. So if I'm I'm getting my goals right, uh, I ask uh, Charles if I have to eat if I can eat something. And uh, yeah, normally he he gave me something. Um, but yeah, I mean my favorite shit meal, man, man, I'm a food lover. So. About food, my my number one is Mexican food for sure, and I think my second one is maybe Italian food. I love pasta, I love pizza, all that stuff. I don't know, man. It always depends. Pero más específico en hablando de la comida mexicana, so more specifically the Mexican food. ¿Cuál es tu plato favorito? Estamos curiosos de eso. Easy money, tacos, the first one. Tacos, very simple. Uh, you put meat. Or you put beef, you put uh, some onions, cilantro, guacamole, tacos. Very simple. And I mean, you can you can exchange the meat for whatever, you know. A, a taco is for everything. The second plate of Mexican food, I think, can be chilaquiles. I mean, eat, 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 eat breakfast with chilaquiles. You know, chilaquiles verdes with with eggs. Man, oh, man, delicious. Hmm. Well, I have <laughs> I'm, I'm in Peru. I'm just thinking about it. I'm in Peru right now, and I've been here okay. for about 
two months. So you're making my mouth water. I can't get wait to get back to Las Vegas and have some Mexican food. I haven't had any Mexican food either. I, I, I have to keep up on that same topic because now I got to know what's your favorite spot in, in Las Vegas for tacos and for pizza? Oh, man. I don't have a... I don't have an, uh, um, a favorite spot in, in, in Vegas for for tacos. I, I You know what? I like tacos al gordo. The, the flavor is good. It's very similar than, than Tijuana. Not the same, but very similar. Uh, mm -hmm. I like tacos al gordo. I'm talking about pizza. Man, Vegas has a, a lot of different places uh, with good pizza, you know? Uh, I'm just trying to think of, uh, about one specific place, but, man, so close to my home. Close to my home, I, we have a, a, a an Italian restaurant. It's like very small. It's, it's very nice because it feels like like home. Like this, it's small, and the pizza is really good. All right, listen, we live probably like ten minutes from you. So after this fight, I'm gonna take you to a pizza place and a taco place. And if I pass the test, let's go. I want to be. I, I want the position of the UFC PI, the reverse of him. All right, he's the guy that helps you make weight. I'm the guy that puts it back on. Okay, that'll be my new role in your camp. <laughs> so when when we're done we with have, that, I, I have one guy like that here in Mexico. Yeah. I have a friend. So his name is El, el Desnutriólogo, Desnutritionist. <laughs> what is it again? El uh, we we always make jokes about it. Uh, like, oh yeah, we have the or we have our nutritionist and everything. We have you know, tenemos a nuestro nutricionista, pero también mm -hmm. tenemos a, a nuestro desnutriólogo. We have or <laughs> this is this true, true. Is that's awesome <laughs> um man i can't stop thinking about this okay um so let me ask you this dana white has talked about fights in the sphere have you been to the sphere yet Ooh. and if, if so like what do you think that, is that something that maybe you need, you need to get there a little bit earlier and just kind of absorb it because it seems so distracting you know all that going on as a fight is actually happening because you're going to be right by the screen uh, what do you think that's going to be like for you? Man, I don't know, but I, I, I feel very interested in, uh, to know how a gypsy is gonna is gonna make all the production around that that place. You know, I'll be I'll be there just out of the of the sphere, and it's amazing, it's incredible. Dana White went to the to a to a press conference saying the next uh, Noche sure Warfare is gonna be there. So, man, I'm I'm just interested to. To, to see how the production is going to be in that event. And for sure, you never know. Hopefully, I can fight there. Last one from me. If this were the Brandon Moreno book, or, you know, what would you say would be the name of the chapter that's about to start right now in 2024? <laughs> uh, wow, man. I mean, I would love to say the comeback, but I mean, I, I, I won the title. I lost it. I lost the title. And I won the title again, so that was my comeback. This one, I don't know, like maybe the the res, the resilience chapter of my life can be, you know. Um, every single every single day when I wake up in the morning and I, and I have to put all my hard work, uh, I'm just trying to remember to remember myself why I, I started doing this. You know, I, it's been it's gonna it's been a, a long journey for me. I'm, I'm I'm very young, but at the same time, I'm starting this very. So I had a, a lot of good and bad moments in my life. I always say this, like my life is a kind of roller coaster. But I mean, I I, I couldn't change uh, this life for nothing. I love my life and, and I'm just here. Even right now, when I'm still doing sacrifice, when the people think maybe like, oh, he, he was a champion. He he doesn't need to do more uh, more sacrifices. Man, you never, you never finish to pay the price. Right now I'm here in Puebla with a lot of different fighters in one home. And far from my home, from far from my home, far from far from my daughter, from my wife, suffering a little bit, but that uh, that keep me, uh, you know, with with angry, with with hungry, you know. So I'm just enjoying this. Last one for me. Uh, are you friends, or do you know Sergio Checo Perez? And did you go to F1 in Las Vegas? No, I, I don't have the opportunity. I was in I, I was in Dallas when. Uh, F1 went to, to Las Vegas. I was training in Fortis MMA with 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 Safe, um, with Coach Safe, and I know I don't know Checo Perez, but 
uh, hopefully in, in the future I can meet him. He's 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 getting a huge name in Mexico uh, right now. Yeah, he was doing really really good in that race. Uh, I thought he had a good chance to win, but there was a lot of Mexican fans there. It was awesome to see Mexico always represents whether it's soccer, boxing, <laughs> MMA, F1, man. And there was a lot of them there to support Checo Perez. It was really cool uh, to see. And they're going to be there for the next 10 years, I yeah. think, they've committed. So hopefully you can go to one. Hopefully I can have the opportunity. I've never, I never been in an F1 uh, race before. Yeah, it's cool. Brandon, thank you so much for the time today. It was great catching up with you. I hope you have a safe camp, though, whatever's left of it. I guess about another three weeks or so and a uh, great weight cut and the fight of your life in front of your Mexican fans, man, against Brandon Roy. Well, we can't wait. Awesome, guys. Thank, thank you so much. And, and nothing nice to talk with you guys. I, I'll see you in the future. <laughs>